Hey everybody, it's Liam Landry here with the Small Crescent Lanes, and I just got finished watching uh, Kazuno Road, the New Japan uh, tour, sh and three-day show is starting with June 17th, 18th, and 19th. And I'm here to give you not necessarily a whole review because it was a lot of matches, can't really go through all of them, but I'm going to give you some good, uh, some really good matches there that I think you should check out and some of the storylines from them. Uh, so first one I want to talk about is the Juice Robinson versus Jay White storyline. They of course are having a match at San Francisco in the G1 Climax Kickoff show, and they use this opportunity to further that storyline. So all three days they faced off against each other in multi-man tag matches, and they you know basically built a storyline. That's the first one, you know it. You know if you watch Dominion. Uh, Juice pinned Jay White and, you know, paraded around with the title of the U.S. Ch uh, the United States Heavyweight Championship and then, you know, even dropped it on Jay in a disrespectful manner, manner. So after their first match on the first night, Jay just went and, you know, attacked Juice, injured his hand and everything. And Juice was visibly upset. Second night, they're trying to keep you know, keep him away. Uh, Juice was teaming up with Tanahashi and Kushida, and they were trying to keep him back, saying, "No, no, no, man, you, you injured your hand. You, 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 you gotta stay back." And they try to keep him apart, but it doesn't matter because Jay White, after the match, still attacks him. You know, attacks a lot of the other guys on his team. Puts the hand in, you know, uh, one of the steel chairs, and you know, smacks down on the steel chair, injuring it further. Then, you know, third night in the match, they end up leaving before it's over because they're just brawling on the outside and they just end up spilling out into the back and you don't see them ever again. So I think in that, you know, three-day period with those three shows, they did a great job uh, building up that rivalry, putting a lot of heat behind it and making me want to watch it. So I thought that was really good. You should check all those out. They were also pretty good uh, matches. And, uh, and I would say... Overall, you know, it was good shows. I didn't think they've had any really bad matches. Maybe some just okay ones, but I didn't think there was any bad ones. So, but these matches, check them out. They were good matches, had the good storyline going, and you can really get into that uh, that rivalry in just a really short time. So it was good work for them on that writing. Now, the next one I want to talk about is the main event from the first night, which was Elgin versus Goto in the, for the Never Open Weight Championship. And this was a really good match. I, I liked it a lot. It was my favorite of the three nights. I think there's another match some other people would think is their favorite. I'll get to that later. But this was the favorite for me. You know, it's two guys that are similar build similar styles so they really mesh, mesh well and they end up pulling up a lot of you know spots I didn't think they were going to do or even could do you know there was a great point where Goto is kind of bent over outside the ring in pain and Elgin goes and just like does a double foot stomp on his back and Elgin hits a, a really good really great job kick gets a lot of height in there and there's a point where they do a a late trap sunset flip power bomb. Goto does that to Elgin from the top rope, and some other really great po really great points in there, and it's really entertaining match. And like I said, I think it's the best one. I'm not gonna go into you know the winners of. I, I really say I won't go into winners of a lot of these matches just because I don't want to spoil it, especially for this one, because. It has such a great back and forth, and you don't really know who's going to win. It really helps, you know, build that uh, build that tension. So I think it really spoils it if you go in knowing who wins. So, so I won't go into the winners just because of that. Um, next one I want to talk about is from the second night. Uh, Taguchi, Toa, Finley, and Togi. Versus Sho, Yo, Yoshi, and Yano. And I thought this was a really great match. They had a very similar match the night before. With all, you know, a lot of the same people in there. But this one was better because it had all the similar spots in it. But 
even more stuff to it. And when I say spots, it was really a very comedy-based spot. And it was, uh, so you know, a lot of funny stuff to it. It was very funny, that's why I really can't talk about it too much, because, you know, I can't give away the jokes, but it was very entertaining. Really one to go check out. Next one is um, another multi-man match with members from LIJ, uh, Yabushi, Naito, Evil, and Sanad versus uh, guys from Suzuki Goon, um, Taka, Yoshinobu, Tachi, and Takashi. No, not Taka. Nope. Takashi. Sorry, Takashi, not Takashi. He's LIJ. Um, it was. You know, really good matchup. I especially liked Evil and Sanad in here. They looked really good in there. And they, of course, a lot of great heel work from the Suzuki Goon guys. Uh, I thought it was just really good match overall. Character wise, wrestling wise, and, you know, storytelling wise. I thought it was really solid to match up. So, definitely worth it. Go check it out. Um, next up, we had the other match I was talking about. That a lot of people are probably gonna see is their best match, which was Takashi and Desperado. Second night, same as the. That's why they weren't in the Lij versus uh, Suzuki Goon matchup. Uh, the night before, they had a similar matchup, and they did have Takashi and Desperado in there, but they course, you know, in the main event, so they couldn't be in that. That's for the Junior Heavyweight Championship. Really exciting stuff in there. Really you know, crazy, uh, it really starts off like a Falls Count Anywhere match, and then kind of, you know, goes down, and goes into a, like a legitimate wrestling match, so it kind of has both sides for you, if you like more hardcore spots, or you like more technical spots, you know, you, you get a little bit of both there, I thought it was solid, but I didn't, I didn't think it was good as Elk and, and Goto, so, that's why I didn't, you know, that's why I said it wasn't my favorite, but it was really, really close, and I think a lot of people would like it even more. It just depends on your taste. So after that, we go into the third night. We had um, Shoyo and Rocky Romero, uh, Rapani 3K, versus Desperado, Taka, and Yoshinobu. I thought this was a great six-man tag match. It kind of started off maybe a little slow because, you know, there was some early chaos that happened. But then it kind of... And then it kind of slowed down as they were just uh, working on Yo and just beating him up, building up the hot tag. But after the hot tag and it got really back into the flow, it had some really great stuff in there. You know, it, it just really had some really good people in there and thought it was entertaining overall, so... I really enjoyed that. You check that out. And then the main event of the third night is the last match I want to talk about, which is one of the big points of this uh, three day sh event, which was the retirement of a wrestler known as uh, Super Strong Machine. Now, I don't know a lot about New Japan history, so sadly I don't know a lot about the backgrounds, but apparently it looks like he was a masked wrestler that was very popular, and he ended up building a kind of team or faction around him called Super Strong Machine as a team, and it was bas basically the team is a, a lot of other wrestlers who just kind of wear a similar mask, and they just kind of incorporate a little bit of their gimmick into that. And um... <laughs> But yeah, I don't I don't know how it goes. I don't know if it's supposed to be like, you know, Mr. America thing where everyone knew it was Hulk Hogan, but you were supposed to pretend it's not Hulk Hogan, or that people didn't know it was Hulk Hogan, or if it's just very open and obvious that, you know, these guys are them, and they're just wearing the mask and being a part of this group. I, I, like I said, don't know how it works with that. But in there, we didn't actually get Super Strong Machine in the match. He, he does do one clothesline in there, but, you know, since he's mostly retired, he's just on the outside watching the match. And instead of him, you actually get uh, Taguchi. He 
he becomes the newest member of Super Strong Machine, which is why I think it, I think it's like there. Everyone knows that's the wrestler, and they just wear the mask to be part of the team. So I guess he becomes Super Strong Machine number sixty nine. The quote said, "Then you have Super Strong Machine Buffalo Ace Don and Justice." And if you watch the event all the way through, you've seen all the other guys, you know, without the mask and in other wrestling gimmicks. And they were taking on LIJ, uh, the, the full team of LIJ. And this was a really good match, and I think LIJ makes a great uh, foil for them because because of their disrespectful nature of, you know, like that's, that's just kind of the thing. They don't respect stuff. They don't respect titles and... That's so it makes a good fall to be against this, you know, team and its final going that has so much respect from everyone in the crowd that it that's very natural. So it's a good choice for them. Uh, so I'm not, like I said, I can talk about who you know, wins or loses. I think maybe some people could be surprised by the who wins this, but uh, you know, overall, it was still good. While it wasn't probably the most amazing match. In the series, because it, you know, because it wasn't really technically the greatest. It still had some really good spots in there. They really went out all out with this. Uh, all of the members of Super Strong Machine got to do their thing because this is going to be, you know, the last time you see them. And the crowd, you know, was so behind it, and especially the announcers, they were getting really into it. That was the most excited I heard them in the, you know, three nights. It was Japanese announcers, so I, I can't follow what they're saying, but you can really hear the passion that they're talking about, how excited they are, and really even giddy at times. So it so it's a great feeling just to see all that. Then after that, the night ends with a you know video package talking about Super Strong Machine and interviews, and then a nice ceremony where uh, some other people in management and other wrestlers and his manager come in you know give him like a, a bouquet and everything and then he does the final farewell speech like i said said i don't know japanese so i so i can't really get into it that well but it's still great to see and very passionate and you you can tell how many people really love super strong machine and really get behind it so it was a great thing to watch and i think even if you don't know the history you, you still get a lot from it. I, I certainly did, so that's why I think you should check it out. And anyways, if you like this video, you can leave a like, subscribe to see more videos like this. I don't know how many you know multi-day New Japan events we're going to be doing, because uh, this is kind of a trial run, and I don't know if it's going to work really well, but maybe we'll do some. But not, you know, you subscribe to see other videos. Follow me on Twitter at Liam underscore SWA. Hit the bell. To get notified when we go live for most we go live for most pay-per-views and we're gonna go live for our podcast every sunday at 1 p.m central time and um yeah i believe that's all anyways oh and also be on the lookout for our isa and myself's review of the uk tournament matches that's gonna be a different thing that's gonna be coming up soon anyways till next time See ya.